Hello YouTubers and fellow hams, welcome to another video. Uh, a little while back I showed you the twin lead J-pole that I made years ago and uh, the site that showed you how you could make them. Uh, a couple of commenters mistook that for a Slim Jim, which is a very close cousin to the J-pole, electrically almost identical. Uh, we'll get to that. Um, and uh, I thought, you know what, I've got uh, a lot of extra uh, window line now since I took the... Uh, 80, 75, 80 fan dipole failed experiment apart. Uh, I'm going to make a Slim Jim. Uh, maybe it'd be a better external antenna for me and uh, I could put my little roll up twin lead J pole back in the box as my go antenna. So that's what I did. I made a Slim Jim. Now, a Slim Jim is similar to a J pole. J pole, you've got that J shape for the conductor, right? Well, if you continue it from the top back over and back down, and then cut a notch there, that's a Slim Jim. Connected at the top, connected at the bottom. So it's a, like a big letter C that comes down to a really close gap and is stretched really tall. And uh, quite often is made out of uh, ladder line or window line. Uh, can be made out of other materials like pipe, copper pipe or whatever. Uh, I chose to make it obviously out of window line. Uh, so. Let's go to the computer and we'll look at the design and the website and we'll talk a little bit about it. For the construction of the antenna, I followed the guide provided by M0PZT on his website here. It's pretty nice. I'll put it in the uh, description so you can follow it. And he has a good diagram here of the actual layout of the antenna. It's really easy to put together. We'll look at that here in a sec. He's got some notes here on tuning it and um, how to uh, resolder and move the tap. So yeah, this is a good read. I'd recommend going to his site um, if you really want to get a little bit more detail on it. So let's go and look at my construction. So first off, here are the details. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a closer look at this here. Uh, I put a hole up here at the end, um, right up here. To, uh, to hang it with, the overall length from the top where the ends are joined together, by the way, you join the ends at, at uh, both ends of the window line. The overall length is 150 centimeters or 59 inches. Um, at the bottom again, you join the ends. The coax is going to tap in about 10 centimeters or 3.9 inches up the uh, window line. You'll just want to bear the wires at that point uh, for where you attach your, your coax. Uh, from this bottom end, about 19.6 inches or around uh, 49 and a half centimeters up, you're going to make a cut right there. And then you're going to leave a gap of uh, 2 centimeters or about 0.8 inches. Um, to the other wire. So you're going to want to cut out a section of that wire about 0.8 inches. And that's really all you need to do as far as cutting. Um, this remaining segment along this side, just leave it there because that's, that's tied together up here at the top. I don't know that it electrically does anything, but uh, it's, it's good to have it there for the strength. Uh, also, if this cut can take place where one of these gap, one of these uh, insulating parts are, um, like if you can make the cut in the middle there and it lines up right, that's good because you'll get that strength carryover from this piece. He shows it cutting in one of the windows here. It really depends on how, how you cut your line, but I try to cut mine so that this gap is going to be here. Uh, that allows um, this remaining insulation here to carry the structural load of the antenna so you don't have it bending at this point. So that's just that's just a thought. Uh, as far as where the coax connects here, you might be tempted to cut this uh, where the center is coming straight out one way and the shield is coming straight out the other way. Uh, don't do that. I went ahead and did that at first. I wasn't thinking. And what happens is when you solder it, this happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
that's not too good. The uh, uh, wire is right here for the center. And when I soldered it and heated it up, it melted its way out of the insulation, bringing it dangerously close to the shield here. So you don't want to do that. And I, I think I knew this. I just forgot while I was putting it together. What you want to do is you want to do something like this. You want to strip back the uh, coax a little further and uh, do it so that the wire is coming straight up out of the coax. And that way, when you do your soldering over here, you're not going to melt this insulation. And then you want to uh, tap these points at the same point, both the shield and the center, right? The same distance up. And what you will do to tune the antenna uh, after you hang it up and you check the SWR is you'll reheat these and move them just slightly in one direction or the other. And you'll want to move them together, right? You'll want to move this, the center, and the shield together so that they're at the same point across this way. I think if you want to move the frequency down, you'll move the taps down slightly um, and towards the end. This is the short end down here, obviously, because the coax is running down here. Oh, and by the way, somebody might say you don't want to run your coax um, right along the uh, window line like this. Uh, it doesn't matter. I I've done this. I've done it both ways, and I haven't seen any difference. In fact, when I had this hung up at first with just the tap, I had the coax coming straight out away from the uh, window line, and uh, I got the SWR where I wanted it, and then I strapped it down against the window line like this, and I reswept it, and there was no change. Uh, so that doesn't really matter. Um, anyway, you'll get that tuned, and, uh, and then you'll want to take the strain off. Um, I temporarily had some pieces of wire tying it on here. I replaced those with zip ties. I figured the less metal between this leg and this leg, the better. Although I really didn't see any difference at all in the uh, SWR when I did the sweeps. Okay, um, so I finished up my antenna and I was going to put it outside. Um, I sealed up this, this section. You really want to seal this up if it's going to be outside because you do not want water getting into that braid. Um, any water that, that uh, gets in there will leach down into the coax and will will corrode the uh, shield and will screw up your uh, your SWR real quick. So you really want to seal that up. What I did was uh, I just took some silicone rubber and uh, I just gooped it on there real good, smeared it around, made sure there were no gaps, no openings. So this end of the coax is totally sealed. And I use silicone rubber because it's electrically neutral. It's not conductive. Uh, it doesn't affect anything on the SWR of the antenna. And then I wanted to put it outside. Now, my plan, on the side of the RV, I have these broom mounts um, that I've shown in the previous video with the 2-meter uh, Slim Jim. Or, it's not Slim Jim, uh, J-Pole. And uh, what I want to do is I'm going to use PVC for a backbone on the antenna. I'm just going to tack it on to there. Uh, and I'm going to go to the hardware store. It's going to be a couple of weeks before I can get to the hardware store. But I'm going to get a uh, 3 8 to half inch reducer. Let me get this down here, right here. Uh, and I'm going to use a short piece of 3 8 in the broom handles and broom handle mounts because it fits perfectly in those broom handle clamps. And then a reducer, and I'm going to use one half inch PVC that's going to be long enough to where the antenna can start here just above the roof line and extend the full length of it. And the reason I want to do that uh, with half inch is because it's a little more flexible. So uh, as the wind comes blasting in from time to time, which it does out in the desert, then this will just flex slightly and take some of that load instead of transferring all of it against the broom handles. Um, you want just a little flex, I guess, on these masts. I, I do anyway. I've, I've found that when this up here can flex, uh, you don't see as much movement down here. You know, you're not putting as much of a strain on these. So uh, that's that's what I'm going to do is use half inch. But I don't have that yet. I just have a long piece of 3 8 out there that I had the uh, the TV twin lead J-pole inside of. So just for now, uh, to get the antenna up in the air, I'm I tacked it onto the side of 
that three eighths, as you can see here. Uh, it's, you know, that wasn't quite long enough, so the end of the antenna sticks up a bit at the end, but that's okay, I'm just testing it, you know, just playing around with it. And once I get the, uh, the smaller half-inch PVC up here, um, it'll be the full length. I used uh, some small screws, uh, as you can see right here in the image, and I just uh, tacked it onto the PVC. Again, did not affect the SWR at all. Uh, the proximity to the PVC did not affect the SWR at all. There was no shift whatsoever. And then uh, it just is clamped on here. You can see one of those broom handle clamps here. Um, also, I did a little coaxial choke. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for doing that. One is it's going to keep RF or cut down on RF from the antenna traveling down the coax into your radio or into your shack. Uh, it's also going to, uh, in this direction, uh, it's going to electrically isolate the J-pole from the coax so that your coax doesn't affect the antenna. And uh, so it's, it's a dual purpose. So yeah, you do want to have a little bit of a choke there. So that's how I've got it mounted right now, and uh, it's working really well. Uh, there's a lot of speculation out there on other sites uh, about the Slim Jim antenna having all kinds of gain over a J-pole. That doesn't look to be true. Uh, I could not find any data about that. It was just claims being made. But I did run across this excellent article written in 2015 by John Huggins. And uh, he has quite a... Uh, little little essay on it here. Um, he talks about the history of the antenna, uh, but he also has access to testing facilities and a, a, uh, a setup that's designed to test antennas. And he did some real-world measurements comparing the traditional J-pole to the Slim Jim design. Now, he made these uh, smaller to test them at microwave frequencies, but he's, he's comparing, you know, the two antennas. And uh, what he finds, here's a plot that shows both um, antennas, the traditional J-Pole and the Slim Jim, and you can see they're quite close. It's a really good article. I'd read the entire thing through. It's, it's very clear, the tests he did and what they discovered. The long and the short of it is that the Slim Jim has about 4% better gain. Here, here's, the, here's the table right here. Um, it's about 4% better than the J-Pole. Not much, you know. They're pretty much the same antenna. Uh, there's, there's also another article he references in here. Uh, I think a student, uh, some student tests. Where was it? Oh, it's up here somewhere. I missed it. But in here, there's, there's uh, some students at a college did some real-world tests with full-size J-Poles and came up with the same results. The... Uh, <clears throat> Slim Jim does not provide a tremendous amount of gain over a, a regular J-pole. Uh, what it is good for is, I guess, construction convenience if you're making it out of window line. I mean, if we go back and we look at, you know, the design here, uh, making it out of window line is easy. Uh, you can knock this out in a half hour. It's, it's real simple to put together. Uh, it has some convenience if you're using a uh, window line that's built with uh, stranded wire. It's more flexible. You can just roll it up to store it. Um, yeah, it's it's easier to build. I guess that would be the big convenience to doing it this way uh, versus a, a J-pole. Although you could cut this end and eliminate this whole section and with a little bit of retuning, you might have a, a, just a regular J-pole. But again, that would be more work. I think it's really just construction convenience that is the good argument for going with this design because this really doesn't take hardly any time to put together. So presently I have it up there on the side of the RV and I've got my little HTX202 sitting over here hooked up to it for a low, easy on the batteries, uh, local to communi communications. I've been hearing repeaters from all over the place when I scan the band. Uh, I've talked to several uh, local hams on 5.2 Simplex uh, and uh, actually, I did, uh, well, first off, let me show you the SWR. Um, I forgot to do that. This is a VNA sweep of the SWR curve and impedance. Uh, and this was taken at the coax and here at the radio. Uh, so it's the coax running up through the uh, side of the RV and up to the antenna where that choke is. 
and you can see it's it's just about perfect i don't think i could get any better um, when i was trying to adjust it I, I just moved those taps a slight bit because it, it was low and i just happened to hit it right near the center of the band like this so excellent swr curve right down to one to one at the middle uh, like I said, really couldn't get any better. It's only, uh, it's below 1.5 to 1 at each band edge too, so it's broad enough to uh, cover the entire band at a low SWR. Um, performance wise, as we saw on that other website, it's going to do about as well as a dipole, as a resonant dipole would if it was standing on end. Um, and uh, yeah, well, it's good. I mean, it's much better than a, a quarter wave ground plane. Uh, probably about as good as a 5 8 wave mag mount or right around in that area, maybe a little bit better. I don't know. It's, it's really good. Um, I was talking to, uh, talking to James, um, yes, day before yesterday, I think he was on his way South from Kingman. He was heading down to Yuma to uh, meet up with the rest of the Rat Pack. And he came right past here on 95. And, uh, I started to hear him when he was about 15 miles away. But uh, at 5 watts, he couldn't hear me until he was closer. Now, he was about 4 miles north. Here's a map. Um, he was around here when I started to hear him. And I'm down here about 4 miles south and over here in the desert. Uh, so there was probably a good 11, 12 miles between us or so. Or 10 miles, maybe. And I was on uh, Simplex, and he was in his mobile. And uh, we had a good QSO. Uh, he, as he left, he uh, got a little ways south of me before he started to picket fence, as you'd expect, you know, with a mobile and uh, with only five watts. We, but we managed to talk for quite a while. Uh, I'm pretty happy with its performance. It, it's working about as good as, as a 5 8 wave on a vehicle might, I think. At least it's what it feels like to me. But, you know, that's just my opinion. <laughs> um, and as we saw from the website... Uh, its performance compared to a regular J-Pole is pretty close. Uh, those were tests uh, done, in, according to him, in, in a chamber designed to test antennas uh, and real-world measurements. And so, yeah, I'd, I'd take that over uh, a lot of claims on the other sites of, of 3 dB gain over a J-Pole, but never any data from testing that I could find. You know, there, there might be some out there, but it certainly looks like it's about as good as a regular J-Pole, which kind of makes sense to me. I mean, it, electrically, that's about what it is. Um, yeah, anyway, enough about that. I'm sure that'll be a, quite a controversial subject. There's probably going to be a lot of comments, <laughs> but that's the way it goes. Uh, so anyway, that's it for this video. Um, I'm getting ready to head south myself. I'll probably do a quick little vlog entry before I do. But uh, the next video will be down uh, with the Rat Pack down by Yuma, Arizona. See you then. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.